Hi, Santiago from Upsev here. In this video, we will learn about the integration between the Ultimate Character Controller and the Ultimate Inventory System. You can download the integration by going to the documentation page and find your download link. Make sure you choose the character controller that you own. Once you have all three packages, you can install them in Unity. First, we'll start by installing the character controller, then the inventory system, and then the integration between the two. Now the integration has finished installing, the first thing we should do is go to AppSiv, go inside the Ultimate Character Controller, Integrations, Ultimate Inventory System, Demo, and here we will find the demo scene for the integration. We can import the TextMesh Pro Essentials Then clear this and press start to give it a try. As you can see, we have some errors. Let's fix those first. It says that button reload is not set up. So we'll go to Tools, Upsiv, Ultimate Character Controller, and go to the Main Manager. The reason we have this error is because we installed the input for the inventory system, but not for the character system. So if we go to setup, we will see here that we have a project setup and we have our button mappings. We should make sure that our buttons are up to date for the character controller and so for the layers. Now our project should be set up correctly before pressing play, let's first change the window here for the resolution to 16 by 9 aspect. This is to make sure that the demo scene has a correct uh, UI placement and UI size. Then we'll press play. And we'll see our character that can move. He can pick up some items. I can open the inventory and I can equip some new items. I can fire, etc. So let's see how this looks in the inspector. We can click on Nolan here, which is our character. Here we can see that we have our character inventory bridge, which is the bridge between the character inventory and the inventory system inventory. Here we have a few settings that we need to set, for example, the categories for the equipable items and the ammo. It's important to understand that equipable items uh, category means equipable items for the character. That includes weapons that will be used by the character system. You can also equip items without the character system. And if that's the case, then they should be part of this. Uh, item category. The ammo item category or for uh, consumable items for the uh, character system items. So for example a assault rifle bullet will be considered an ammo item. Then we have uh, some attribute names that we'll set up uh, later in the video and the important part will be this the equipable item collection names. So these will be the equipable item collections that the bridge will monitor to know what items the character should equip. So as you can see, we have the equipable slots and equipable item collections, which we have inside our inventory. So here we have our equipable slots, which will have an item slot set as the slot set for the item slot collection. We have our primary weapon, our secondary weapon, and our tactical weapon. Here in the UI, we have those slots in our equipment window. Primary, secondary, tactical. If we go back to the character, go back here to our item collections, we can see that we have our shield and our assault rifle here in this item collection. If we go to equipable, 
here we'll have all the other items. So for example, we'll want to equip our assault rifle inside a specific slot, but some items like the body will want to always have equip or only equip at a specific time. For example, if we fire a fireball, then we just want to equip it and then unequip it, but without equipping it to a specific slot inside our item slot collections. So this is why we can add as many item collections as we want to be equipable. This is nice to organize your items. Then you have your loadout and your default item collection. The default item collection will have all your items that you'll have in your bag. So these are the items we have. And then the loadout will be the items that you will start with. So at the start of the game, the loadout can be equipped here or will be moved or copied to the default item collection and if you have a saver that saves your data for your inventory then the loadout won't be overwritten but the items in your main item collection will be overwritten so this is the main difference between these two then another component that is really important for the integration will be our inventory item set manager in the inventory item set manager you have different categories for your items that can set up in this scriptable object called an item set rule object. So here we have our item set rule object, which has different item categories for different items. For example, all our equipable items, we'll have them here and we'll choose how to equip them. For example, we can choose that a blade and a shield will be equipped together inside a same item set. So if I equip any sword, then you'll see that I have both the shield and the sword. For the single wield gun, this will be our assault rifle here. And since I have it alone, then we'll know that I should equip only the assault rifle and not the assault rifle with the shield. So there's a good abstraction between the item set manager, which is uh, mainly controlling what the character does and the items inside the equipable item collection. For example, a good use case for this is if you have, let's pick up a pistol from over here. Let's say we equip our assault rifle and our gun. Then you'll see that we have both the assault rifle and the gun equipped. And then the assault rifle will be on the back of the character in the holster because we've set this up on the item itself and we have both equipped. Then we can switch between the two, for example, by scrolling with the wheel. And this actually scrolls between our item sets, which are these ones. These ones are the item sets that are active on the character. This will only be shown while you're in play mode. So these are the item set rules, which create the item sets at runtime, depending on the items that are equipped in the equipable item collections. So right now we have an assault rifle, a pistol, a body, an empty item set with nothing, and something with the grenades, uh, right hand and left hand and magic. A different use case which is more advanced is the grenade use case. So if we equip a grenade then we'll have here for different uh, item categories left hand grenade and right hand grenade. So this allows us that if we have a grenade equip then it will show here in the main item collection so let's see if I equip, let's unequip, equip. So we have our grenades, which is active and we can use it. Or we can switch weapons and have our gun and use the grenade while we have our gun equipped. We can do this with the G button, the G key on the keyboard. Here the difference is that in the first case, 
we're using the item set here with the primary grenade and in the second use case we're actually using this grenade here you can see that it's active so this is a great way to debug what is going on with your character you can simply press on it and check in the inspector just note that while the inspector is open uh, while the game is playing the game will be slower since there's a lot of going on in this inspector let's see if there's anything more specific to the integration there's an inventory bridge saver which is specific to the integration uh, it will save the inventory in a specific way such that when you uh, save and load the data then all your equipped items will be back to the states they were before that's about all the specific components for the integration and we've gone through the integration demo so now let's go and try to set this up uh, in a new scene from scratch so here I've set up a new scene which just has a plane where the character will stand up on the first thing we'll want to do is create a new database so we'll go to tools, upsave, ultimate inventory system, main manager here we can go to setup and we can create our new database you can either create a new one from scratch or you can duplicate the empty character inventory database uh, this database has all the required item categories but if you create a new item database you can just read the requirements from the integration page documentation and match all the requirements so for simplicity we'll be duplicating this inventory database duplicate we'll put it inside this folder tutorial and we'll call it tuto tutorial tuto inventory database uh, here you don't want to create new folders uh, because there's a bug with unity that prevents you from doing that it will cause an error once you start saving instead either create the folders previously or save it here there you go so now we have a new inventory database we can check our item categories uh, as you can see we have an ammo item category and an equipable item category that I showed you before in the demo scene where these are the two required item categories that the bridge component will reference to to know what items are equipable and which ones are ammo items we also have a droppable item category uh, this simply has a drop prefab that we can use to show an item that is being dropped so this is just the visual part the uh, item pickup part is another prefab so there's will be a prefab with the item pickup and then this will be a child which will show the visual part then we have item with ammo so this has a special item attribute called ammo data so this will be what we'll use to save the amount of ammo that the uh, for example the assault rifle has you can say it has 48 ammo uh, over a 48 clip and say that it has an um, ammo type of assault bullet for example uh, then we have a multi item and single item multi items will have a prefabs array so you can say it for example you have a character item uh, pistol for the left hand and then another one for your right hand so you have two different prefabs and you'll set both here in this array for single items for example just a single sword that you'll uh, always hold in your right hand then you'll have just one prefab which is one game object so this is all the item categories you'll need and then you can create more and combine these item categories by setting multiple parents to create whatever um, item categories and items you want here we don't have any item definitions or any recipes etc the next thing we want to do is create the character in the scene but before we can do this we'll need to set up the scene so if we go in the inventory system manager you'll see that we have a setup here where you can do a scene setup 
we must do the same for the character controller so if we go to ultimate character controller go to main manager setup and then we can set up the scene here if you haven't set up the project you must do so too for the button mappings and for the layers and we also want to set up the camera so let's do both perspectives since we have the UCC package now the scene is properly set up as you can see we have a game game object now which has all of our managers one of the most important managers is this one the inventory system manager which references the database that we created as you can see tuto inventory database tuto inventory database now we want to create the character so for the character to work with the integration then we must use the integration inspector first it says that the character must be created with the character control system and then we can convert it for the integration so we can go here in the character manager in the character tab and then we can set up our new character if you already have a character then you can use that and skip this step we'll set up a character that has both perspectives we need to set up the character here so let's search for Nolan here we drag it drop it in the scene and then drag and drop it in this field then we can set up what type of uh, model it is humanity we'll use a demo animator we must set the first person arms since we'll be using both third and first person we'll set up the animator to first person arms demo and then everything else should be okay we'll just disable ragdoll since we don't want that we'll press build character and now our character has all the scripts to work with the character controller system now we just need to convert this character to work with the integration so we'll drag and drop it in this field here to set up our character Here it tells us that we can save our inventory item pickup, which was automatically created when we created our character. It also creates other scriptable objects in the background. We'll save it in tutorial and we'll replace this one. So now it's actually created all the components we need. So you'll see the character specific to the integration. For example, we can find it the inventory is here the inventory bridge is here and it's referencing the correct item categories so as you can see if I press here you'll find the tutor inventory database the equipable and the ammo item category they're pointed to it also added the equipable slots the equipable of the correct item collection it also created a uh, item plus set for us automatically. So if we click here, you'll see that we have our item slot set, which has a primary, secondary, and tactical uh, slots. So you can edit those and you can edit the category here once you create more item categories. And it also created some rules for us. So the item set rules, as you can see, we have an equipable one and it doesn't have any item categories yet inside so let's go to nolan and we can see here we have it too so it's set up the item set rules object is referenced here and we have our items here what we could do right away is add equipable in the first slot so that when we equip an item then it will be equipped directly here so now that we created a character it will automatically be set here in this uh, field this field will be used by these components on the bottom to know where the item uh, to know what where the character is and what the um, equipable category ammo category etc are 
uh, a side note here we have the prefab and prefabs attribute names these needs to match the item attribute names that we have here prefabs for multiple items and prefab for single item if you want to rename them uh, make sure to rename them both here and here so now that's this is set up what we could do is create a new item so first thing we'll want to do is uh, choose what type of item we want to create so for example we'll set up uh, a category for our assault rifle so let's say that is a primary gun let's say primary gun so a primary gun what we'll do is we'll set the parents we'll say it's a single item and it must be also an equipable item which is automatic since the single item inherits from the equipable item we could also say that is is a item with ammo and we could say that uh, it is droppable if we want to this is optional if we want to drop it with the inventory system or if we want to drop it with the character system so here we have all the item category parents that we want so we have all the required attributes that we need now once we set up the item category we can try to set up the item definition so we'll do assault rifle we'll add our item definition make sure that we set up the item category to our primary gun and here we have our item definitions uh, we probably want to add also some bullets to this assault rifle so assault rifle bullets this must be an ammo category of course if you have uh, children of ammo then you can have gun ammo you can have um, I don't know energy ammo you can make many childs and then these could be children item categories so once you've set up your ammo we could set uh, an icon for example rifle bullet and the description if you want to and inside the assault rifle we'll want to set up a prefab that we'll do later once we create the prefab for this item we can set up the icon so we have an assault rifle in description and then a drop prefab for the drop prefab uh, we can do this it's optional so we can either choose to use this a pickup bag as the visual thing we see when we try to pick up the assault rifle or we can set up our own 3d model of the assault rifle that is up to you there you go so far we've set up the item within the inventory system now we need to create the character item so that we can set up the prefab here we will create the character item on the left we have our character manager and on the right we have our inventory manager so first we'll put we'll go here in the item we'll set the item name in our case it's going to be assault rifle then the item definition we will choose the assault rifle that is the correct one since we have multiple ones we want to make sure that we have the correct path which is in this case tutorial then we do not want to set any character here otherwise instead of creating prefab for our item it will create the item directly on the character that's not what we want to do we want to create a prefab such that we can add items at runtime here we can set the slot id in our case it's going to be slot 0 because we want to put the assault rifle in the right hand you can set up uh, slot ids wherever you want on the character then we have our animator item id in the case of assault rifle it's going to be 1 
for other items it could be a different ID. You can either check the documentation or the item prefabs to see what this ID could be. For the first person we will set up the model for the assault rifle and then the animator controller. We won't set anything for the first person base. And we can do the same for the third person. So in this case assault rifle and assault rifle. Then we have the action type. Here we have multiple things we can choose. In our case, it's going to be a shootable weapon. And we can set up the ammo for our assault rifle. Here it says consumable item definition. A consumable item definition in the scope of the character controller is an ammo item definition in the scope of the integration. That's because otherwise there's the ambiguous of consumable being not used for items such as potions or foods, etc. So here we set the assault rifle, which is a bullet or an ammo. Then we can set the state configuration, which by default is the demo state. Once we press build item, we'll be able to choose where to create our assault rifle prefab, and we can choose to create it here in our total folder. Once we created the item prefab, we must link the prefab with the item here. As you can see, if we press prefab here, it's not linked yet. If we go to integrations, go to the integration inspector, we can find here a place where we can set up our items. Here we can select our character items. In our case, it's going to be the new assault rifle just created. Assault rifle, make sure that the path is correct. If we have multiple items, for example, for multi items, then we could add as many fields as we want. In our case, we just have an assault rifle. It automatically added our item definition here, which is perfect, the assault rifle. And then since it detected that it was a shootable weapon, it added this new field here where we can set the ammo for this assault rifle. It did not detect automatically the ammo, so let's set it up ourselves. And here we have the assault rifle bullets. And then we can choose to bind the shootable weapon to the assault rifle ammo. So this, what we'll do is if we set up the character item and go back to the item definition, if we now go here in the prefab, we will see that we have our new prefab that we set up. We have our item definition and everything is set up correctly. If we scroll down, we'll see at the very bottom that it added an item object, an item binding, and a shootable weapon ammo binding. This was the special condition we had for shootable weapons. And if we check here in the default item attributes, we'll see that for our ammo data, it actually updated to 0, 050 assault rifle bullets. This means that we have a clip of 50 and that we're going to use assault rifle bullets. Then once this uh, value is updated at runtime, it will change the values on the shootable weapon automatically. And this is done by this ammo data attribute, which is bound to this ammo data attribute. You can change the name if you want to. If you have other values that you want to bind, you can use this item binding component. And for example, you could use a float to bind uh, your attack damage. So here I created an attack damage attribute. You can actually create any attribute once. So let's go to primary gun, attack damage. So let's remove it just to show how it's done. We'll call it attack damage. We'll make it a float. There you go. We'll go on our item assault rifle, set the value of 10, for example. 
and then on our item binding component we can go to the item definitions find our attack damage and we can bind it to the shootable weapon so our shootable weapon is here and we can drag and drop it inside this field and then use this drop down to select damage amount as you can see you have multiple options you can choose and these must match the uh, float or the type of the item in this case it's a float okay now you know how to set up your item and everything should be good before we add the item let's see if the character actually works in the scene let's press play we're getting some errors but we can move the character and switch perspective so let's have a look at the warning and the errors. The first warning is about the camera, saying that it doesn't find the character. We can simply drag and drop the character in this field here of the camera. That should solve the warning. And then the error is more complicated. Essentially, it says that the category cannot be found for uh, this ability on the character. The problem was that we created the character while using these demo state configurations from the character system. So it is using or it is trying to use categories from the character demo scene. The way we can fix this is by going to the Nolan character and finding our abilities that are referencing our categories. As you can see here in the error, it was complaining about our equip unequip abilities for each of those equip sit switcher, equip next, etc. These are all of these abilities under our item abilities. A simple way to fix this is simply to find our item set category and re click on those to force the character to re-serialize re the data for this category. Now we can save, clear, press play. And now all of the errors are gone and our character is moving around. So now we have our character, which is set up in the scene and that works. So we'll create an item pickup that the character can use to equip the item. So here we have the item pickup that was automatically created when we set up the character in the editor. As you can see, it's in the tutorial folder. We can drag and drop it in the scene. This is an item pickup that uses the character system item pickup. We could also use the inventory pickup which you can find here in the setup inventory manager and you can create here an inventory pickup simply by selecting a 3D model inventory bag or inventory pickup bag. There you go. So this is just a mesh with some materials, we can create it. So here we have two inventory pickups and they use two different systems. This one will use the pickup system from the character system and then this one will use the inventory system with the interactable and invent uh, inventory interactor. It is up to you which one you decide to use. The only important thing is that you use an inventory or a pickup with an inventory because the inventory pickup that you will use here will require you to be an inventory pickup. So here we'll quickly set up both of them to show you how they work. So we have our inventory pickup for the integration and the 
inventory pickup from the inventory system. Here we'll just add an item which we'll call bullets. So we'll have, for example, 50 bullets in this one. And then one assault rifle. And then in the second one, we'll do the same. We'll put some bullets and one assault rifle. One thing you might want to do is set up a 3D model here such that once you set up the item, you actually see what item you're trying to pick up. To do this, you can add a component which is called Inventory Item Visualizer. You can add this component to both pickups. It works in the same way. The way it works is it will monitor the inventory component, check the first item in the inventory. So we'll want to make sure that the assault rifle is first in both. It will monitor this item and then it will try to find an item attribute with a game object on it and it will spawn that uh, game object under the item pickup. So here we could create a parent visualizer. Do the same here. Create empty. Oh, we actually already have one. We have a model parent with our inventory bag. So that's good. We could actually copy this and paste it here. Just reset this. We'll, we'll keep it as it is to make sure that they're different. This way we can see the difference between the two. And then once we've set this up and we have this inventory item visualizer, we want to make sure that our item, if we go here in assault rifle, that our item drop prefab is the one that we want to use because this is the item that we want the item pickup to look like. So here we have a drop prefab, which is a game object. And we can go here in our pickup and make sure that we are using the right attribute in both cases. That's good. We can save. In case our item does not have a drop prefab, we might want to add a default value here. The default value could be a inventory bag. Inventory pickup bag. Inventory pickup bag. And we'll do the same for the other pickup. Inventory pickup bag. Then want to set the parent to be the right transform. We'll do the same here. The right transform had to be the model parent. And there you go. We have set up our item pickups, both for the inventory system and the integration system. It is up to you which one you use. You can use either one or the other or both. It really depends on the use cases you have. Actually, before we press play, I forgot to mention something. On the Nolan character, under the character inventory bridge, you'll see that you have an option here called drop using character item. And this will, instead of using our prefab here, we'll be using the prefab on our item. What does that mean? If we go here in our tutorial, on our item prefab, you will see that we have a drop prefab here. That means that if we have an item that is equipped on our character and this option is ticked, instead of this prefab for the item pickup, we will use the pickup on the prefab of the item. And this is how we will drop our items. 
it is up to you whether you want to use the drop prefab on the item or have a generic prefab pickup for all your items. If an item is not an equipable item, then it will always use this pickup here. As mentioned previously, you can either use the inventory item pickup or the inventory pickup. Either one works. In our case, we want to make sure that our prefab is up to date, so we'll do overrides and apply all. Then let's press save and get started. As you can see, we have our two weapons that were swapped out to be the drop prefab that we wanted, just like we specified in the item definition. So let's see if we can pick up the integration one. That seemed to work. If we go on Nolan and check our inventory, since we don't have any UI yet, we can say that we actually picked up our 50 bullets and our assault rifle. Now let's try to pick up the second prefab, our pickup, and it doesn't seem to work. It just rolls over. So let's see what could be wrong. If we go here on inventory pickup template, we can see our interactable here. We have our layer mask and it says that we can interact with everything. So for now, let's just make sure that we can only interact with our character. And then the other thing here is that we can auto interact. If we press this option to auto interact, then we will automatically pick up the item. If not, we'll do exactly what we did before. We just kick the pickup away. We can set up the input to pick up the item using this component here for inventory interactor. We can choose an auto interact or use a button to interact with the pickup. If you choose to use a button to interact with the pickup, You'd probably want to make sure that you're using a kinematic rigid body so that you don't kick away your pickup. In the case of the inventory pickup, uh, inventory item pickup, if you're using this kind of pickup, then you would set up an pickup ability on your character instead here, and then you could set up your input. Just to remind you, you can sub set up the auto interact for the interactable here or for this other uh, item pickup. You can choose to auto pick up here using the pickup on trigger enter. Another useful feature from this inventory pickup is that you have a equip on pickup that you can select such that as soon as you enter the item, you will automatically equip it. Now let's try to pick up the items. First we'll pick up the right item, which we used to kick around, but now it seems that we actually picked up the item. You can check onto the inventory. We did indeed take the assault rifle with 50 bullets, and then if we pick up the other one, it should be equipped. And it seems like it did work. The orientation is a bit off. But if we check here under our inventory, we can see that we have a, our assault rifle, the first one that we picked up that is still here, and the second one that we have equipped is in the equipable slots. We still have 50 bullets here in our default inventory because the other 50 bullets that we picked up are equipped directly on the assault rifle. If we go under our item, under items here, we can see that by scrolling down, we have indeed 50 bullets over 50. If we go back to Nolan and scroll up to our character inventory, we can see that we have assault rifle bullets, 50, and assault rifle, one, which is the items that you have equipped. Here, if we go to the inventory item set manager, you can see that we had a rule for item that said that if we had an equipable item, then it would create an item set. 
but for some reason we have two item sets with the same assault rifle. And this is a problem. If we go to the, our assault rifle, if we scroll up, we'll see that we have this unique item set toggled on. This will create an item set if you pick up this item. But this is not what we want to do. We want our item set rule to be the one that creates the item set. So let's exit. We'll go to our assault rifle and untick this option. Now if we save, go back and pick up the item, you can pick up both. If we go back to our Nolan character, now we will see that we only have one assault rifle item set which was created by our rule from our item set. The only reason you want to have this ticked on is if you're not using the item set rule for this item. So far, so good. Next, we'll want to orient our weapon so that we can fire it. If we try to fire right now, it will say that our shootable weapon is not looking in the right uh, place. So if we select our weapon, and find our third person assault rifle, we can try to rotate the item. Now it seems that the character has the item in the correct orientation. Let's see if we can fire. Yes, it seems like it's working. To make sure that it is indeed working, we can go under our items, assault rifle, and if we scroll down, we will see that we have our item binding, which was binding our ammo data, and we have our item object, which has the inventory item, which is bound to this character item. And if we go to our ammo data, we can see that we have 45 ammo over 50. So if we continue to fire, we can see our value of bullets decreasing. So it seems like everything's working. If you want to keep this orientation, the next time you pick up the item, you can choose this uh, game object, copy these values from the transform that you set up at runtime, and copy them to the prefab. To do this, you can lock the inspector, create a new inspector here using add tab inspector, and then selecting your prefab. Then you can find your component that you're looking for, which is gonna be our first person perspective item. If you want to set the transforms for your first person, in our case, we are going to set up for the third person, which is this one, local spawn position rotation for the third person perspective. You simply copy and paste those values. If you want to learn more about setting up character items, you can watch the tutorials from the character system and from the documentation. Now that we've set up these values, we can save, leave play mode, enter play mode again. And now the next time we're going to pick up the item, we should see that it is oriented the right way. And indeed it is. As you can see, we're not firing any projectiles because we haven't set anything under our item projectiles, under shootable weapon. If you want to learn more how to set up a character item, once again, I would recommend that you watch the video tutorials from the character controller system. In this video, we learned how to create a character and equip an item such that they can work for the integration between the ultimate character controller system and the ultimate inventory system.
In the next video, we'll learn how to set up some UI such that we can see the items that we have equipped and such that we can equip other items and see all our items in the UI. I hope you learned a lot in this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.